As we prepare our bodies, hearts, and minds for worship today, I invite you to join me in prayer. God, we, we come before you today in different places, at different times, and maybe even different days. But still, you are with us, despite us all being in different contexts. God, we ask today that you would make your presence known to us. You are near to us, even if it doesn't feel like it. God, use this time of worship to be at work in our hearts. Teach us, guide us, comfort us, convict us. Help us to trust in your infinite wisdom and perfect love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I may show these signs of mine among them, and that you may tell in the hearing of your son and of your grandson how I have dealt harshly with the Egyptians, and what signs I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country, and they shall cover the face of the land so that no one can see the land. And they shall eat what is left to you after the hail, and they shall eat every tree of yours that grows in the field. And they shall fill your houses and the houses of all your servants and of all the Egyptians, as neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen from the day they came on earth to this day. Then he turned and went out from Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not yet understand that, Jesus, that Egypt is ruined? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to, him, said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God. But which ones are to go? Moses said, we will go with our young and our old. We will go with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. But he said to them, The Lord be with you, if ever I let you and your little ones go. Look, you have some evil purpose in mind. No, go the men among you and serve the Lord, for that is what you are asking. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, so that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every plant in the land, all the hail, all that the hail has left. So Moses stretched out his staff over the land of Egypt, 
And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. When it was morning, the east wind had brought the locusts. The locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled on the whole country of Egypt, such a dense swarm of locusts as had e never been before, nor ever will be again. They covered the face of the whole land so that the land was darkened, and they ate all the plants in the land and all the fruits of the trees that the hail had left. Not a green thing remained, neither tree nor plant of the field, through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh hastily called Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore forgive my sin, please, only this once, and plead with the Lord your God only to remove this death from me. So he went out from Pharaoh and pleaded with the Lord. And the Lord turned the wind into a very strong west wind, which lifted the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea. Not a single locust was left in all the country of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be a darkness over all the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the people of Israel had light where they lived. Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Your little ones also may go with you. Only let your flocks and your herds remain behind. But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also must go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we must take take of them to serve the Lord our God. And we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take care never to see my face again, for on the day you see my face you shall die. Moses said, As you say, I will never see your face again. The word of God for us, the people of God. a darkness that could be felt. That's what Pharaoh was experiencing. That's what the whole land of Egypt was experiencing, not just physically. 
but maybe spiritually too. Darkness. It's something that we don't like even when we're children. <laughs> even though some of our most comforting times were in the darkness of the womb before we were spat out into this messy and confusing world. Darkness. We don't really like it. We want night lights or hallway lights or bathroom lights or just a little crack of something under our bedroom doors. We want generators or flashlights or candles or something so that we won't just be alone there, not knowing what's coming next. Darkness seems like a very weird plague to be one of the last ones that is laid upon the land of Egypt. Pharaoh hasn't listened to locusts that ate up all the crops. He hasn't listened to frogs that hippity hopped their way all the way into all the flour and all the sugar and all the grain. He hasn't listened to poisoned water when the water of the Nile became blood. And darkness is supposed to get his attention. Some scholars say with this plague, God is bringing on Pharaoh what Pharaoh has been choosing all along, to stay in the dark, in the dark. I find myself relating to this state this week, not because my power went out, it actually didn't, uh, which is something that I always feel a little bit reticent to say. Even so, as the storm rolled in, as um, I heard the winds blowing outside my window, I heard a giant boom and kind of jumped. <laughs> like many of you, I was in and out of the bathroom for tornado warnings this past week. And I felt myself saying, why on earth, if you had a choice to make some suffering end, wouldn't you choose it? I know a lot of us feel like if we could do something in our lives to make what feels like a biblical plague of the coronavirus, of inequity, of natural disasters, of systemic racism, any of those things, if we could snap our fingers, if we could let a people go and make this all come to an end, we would. And yet I found myself asking, why would Pharaoh make the choice that he made? The book of Exodus says over and over that Pharaoh hardened his heart and then that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. It's something that I don't quite understand, that I am in the dark about. Why sometimes we choose um, the wrong that we know <laughs> won't bring us peace instead of the good that we want to do. I wonder what it is that so dehumanized Pharaoh that he felt the need to dehumanize the children of Israel by making them slaves, by putting them into cruel bondage and not even letting them go worship God for a you know couple day revival meeting out in the desert. I wonder if Pharaoh, like so many of us, was captive to a fear that he wouldn't name or elaborate, or maybe even wouldn't admit to himself, even in those 3 a.m. stretches of the darkness of the night. How would this story have been different if Pharaoh somehow could have said, I was wrong. If Pharaoh, faced with this darkness, could have let himself acknowledge his need of God. If he could have said, you know what? I have sinned. I have sinned against God and against my neighbor. I was trying, trying, trying to hold up this system of power, this status quo, the best way I knew how. I don't know. 
I'm in the dark. What, what would it have looked like if Pharaoh could somehow have said, you know what, maybe the building projects, the pyramids, the sphinxes, all of the things that make our country run, I don't know how they're going to survive when we let the children of Israel go. I don't know if it'll make me look weak to admit that I was wrong. I don't know. I don't know what it will look like to make amends for the damage that I have caused and that my soul has been damaged by too. Pharaoh is a story that we don't like to relate to. We like to be Moses and Miriam and Aaron. The writer and theologian Erna Kim Hackett says that the American church, after all, suffers sometimes from what we like to call Disney princess theology. That means we always see ourselves as Cinderella or as the prince and never as the stepmother, as Scar, as Judas, as Pharaoh. And yet, sometimes taking a moment to just sit in the dark, to like children say, I don't know what's out there. I'm scared. I don't know what's coming next. I don't know when the virus is going to be over. I don't know the safest way to conduct business or school. I don't know, maybe if I have done harm to others in ways that I wasn't even aware of. I'm in the dark. What would it mean, friends, to stay in this darkness, maybe? Not necessarily to choose it, but to not try to control situations and circumstances that, beyond, that are beyond our control to cause more harm than good. Uh, we try to avoid saying, <laughs> confronting sometimes that we were wrong. We fill it up with plans or fancy technology. We fill it up with food or parties. We fill that fear, that darkness up with vacations or stuff, sex or drinking, food. We fill it up with everything that seems like might shed a little bit of light, might make the world a little bit less confusing. And yet, what would it mean if some, somehow we asked God to be with us in this darkness, the darkness that we feel sometimes in the beginning of the book of Genesis, it says that the earth was formless and void, but that the spirit hovered over the darkness, over the face of the waters. What would it mean in this time where it feels like maybe we don't have 10 plagues, or maybe we do? to let ourselves fall into the arms of God, to let the spirit hover over the darkness of our lack of understanding, of our lack of control. What would it mean to reach out and not only feel the darkness, but reach out to feel the hand of the spirit reaching out for us. Friends, if you feel in the dark, you are not alone. But sometimes God does his best work in the darkness. Out of the darkness, this world was created and brought forth out of chaos. Out of the darkness, a seed <laughs> emerges from the ground. In the darkness of the womb, God brings forth new life, crying into the world, a world we could not have imagined. Out of the darkness, on the Sunday morning, on the first day of the week, Jesus sprang forth 
to new life? What would it mean to be in the dark with God? I invite you to sit in a way that feels comfortable and calm to you and join me in this prayer. Everlasting God, you led your people out of slavery and into the promised land. You remain steadfast in your commitment to your people through war, exile, and famine. You loved your creation, humanity, so much you were willing to sacrifice yourself through Jesus so that we, your people, may be in full communion with you. Lord, we know you are capable. We know you have the power to answer our prayers. So God, we come to you today with our deepest pains, struggles, fears, and our praises. We pray for the people of the community of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. May they feel connected to the community they love. May those who are in pain feel comfort. May those who are in despair feel hope. May those who are rejoicing feel celebrated and loved. We pray today for our country, its leaders, and its people. May you fill our leaders with wisdom and guide them in their decision making. And will you fill the people of this nation with a spirit of love and reconciliation. For those in the world outside of the United States, may your guiding presence be with them. For those who are suffering from the explosion in Beirut, provide emotional and physical healing. And for those whose struggles around the world we don't know, may those boys and girls and men and women be protected by you. For those prayers that are left unspoken today, listen to our hearts. God, we pray that even the prayers we are too afraid to utter will be answered. Oh God, just as the disciples heard Christ's words of promise and began to eat the bread and drink the wine and the suffering of a long remembrance and in the joy of a hope, grant that we may hear your words spoken in each thing of everyday affairs. Coffee on our table in the morning, the simple gesture of opening a door to go out free, the shouts of children in the parks, a familiar song sung by an unfamiliar face, a friendly tree that has not yet been cut down. May simple things speak to us of your mercy and tell us that life can be good. And may these sacramental gifts make us remember those who do not receive them, who have their lives cut every day and the bread absent from the table, and the door of the hospital, the prison, the welfare home that does not open, in sad children, feet without shoes, eyes without hope, in war hymns that glorify death, in deserts where once there was life. Christ was also sacrificed, and may we learn that we participate in the saving sacrifice of Christ when we participate in the suffering of his little ones. Amen. And now we pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We are praying a blessing every week at Sundays at 6 and the words to that will be found on the screen and I invite you to pray that with me as we go. May the peace of the Lord Christ be with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing and so at the now wonders friends, go in peace. May he and we'll bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.